Well, hi everyone, and welcome back. Uh, thanks for joining me on this Wednesday. The madness continues, and so we continue to uh, just get into the Word of God and get perspective. So thanks for being here and doing that. Hey, I don't know if you are at all aware of TikTok. Okay, you probably know about YouTube and you know other social media, Facebook and whatnot, but TikTok is kind of the current rage uh, among social media in a lot of ways. And, and uh, what it, TikTok is, is it's, um, you can make up to a 60 second video and then upload it. And then you can kind of create a file of all your videos and people can watch them. And it's used for a lot of humor and also a lot of teaching. You can learn kinds of stuff but anyway. But one of the things that happens on TikTok is uh, often a theme will catch on and then you'll just see other people doing that same theme. It kind of repeats itself. So one of the things that is funny uh, that I've discovered on TikTok is um, conversations that take place between married couples. And the conversation goes like this. So let's just picture this. So the husband's driving, the wife is sitting in the passenger seat and she'll take her camera and then she'll look at the camera and then she'll look at her husband and then she'll say this sentence. Um, anything you need to tell me? And the husband will look at the wife and he'll go, what are you talking about? You know, Anything you just need to tell me, anything you just want to get off your chest, anything you want to just like, put out there. And there's this always this awkward moment <laughs> where the guy is trying to figure out what does she know? What has she discovered? And then she might say, well, I was looking at your phone or I was looking at the checkbook. Anything you want to. And then what will follow is usually <laughs> a confession that will shock the wife where he'll say, Oh, are you talking about that? And then he'll mention something he bought on Amazon or, or he'll go, Hey, listen, it was just, and he'll play it down. And it's just a funny moment because he's confessing to something. She doesn't know anything, but it's just a way that you can get somebody to confess. And, uh, it kind of reminds me of the little thing we have going on in our house. I've told you about this before and we've done this for years. Um, often, uh, my wife might walk out of the closet and she'll, you know, she'll have something on that I've never seen before. And I'll go, Hey, is that new? And she'll look at it. She'll go, this whole thing. And so the expression, this whole thing, uh, is something that you know, we thought we were getting away with <laughs> this whole thing. Um, so the reason I'm telling you all this is I, I want you to think about, um, what are you getting away with? What are you getting away with? Or what are you trying to get away with? And I just want to kind of wrestle with that. Now, um, we would love to say, well, I'm not getting away with anything. I'm not, I'm not doing anything I shouldn't be doing. And I'm no, what are you talking about? So what I want to do is uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different uh, for this kind of venue uh, in that I'm going to take you uh, in just a few moments to uh, YouTube. I want to show you a clip on YouTube. Uh, uh, if if you, you don't know, here's what happened. So this is right after the weekend of the 4th of July. And in Los Angeles, in fact, all of California, Governor Newsom declared no fireworks. <clears throat> the L.A. County Fire Department was crystal clear absolutely no fireworks. And there was a, a number of reasons why there was a concern. The most obvious is the whole COVID deal. Um, we, uh, we, can't have, uh, we can't have this emergency stuff going on. We can't have it. And so no fireworks. So fireworks were completely banned. All public fireworks shows were banned. Uh, all private you know, use of fireworks were banned. And uh, so what I want to do is I want to show you, uh, oh, I'll, I'm going to stop talking for 30 seconds. For 30 seconds, I want you to take in a, a video that was shot from a drone over what actually happened after the banning of fireworks in Los Angeles. So watch this and think about what this represents. go on. I think you saw enough to get the point. What does that represent? When you see that, what strictly prohibited, forbidden, no fireworks, um, uh, dozens of fires just in LA, do hundreds of fires in California, but dozens of fires in the LA area, over a hundred were, were lit, trees were lit on fire, all kinds of emergency, understaffed, under, you know, capable of dealing with it. They had to shut 911 down. It was crazy, or they had to limit 911. It was a crazy experience. What does this say about us now as people? What did, 
did we not think anyone would see? Did we not think anyone would notice? Did we think we were going to just go uh, undetected? So it reminds me of uh, a principle in, well, actually, it reminds me of a concept in the Old Testament that's in the book of Judges that's a really tragic time. It's a time, in fact, let me read to you just one of the passages. In Judges 17, 6, it says this, in those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did as they saw fit. Well, what does that mean? It, it, it means that there was an, a, a period of time where people just said, I'll just make my own mind up. I'll just do whatever seems right to me. I'll just, I'll make my own rules and I'll live by those rules. And uh, if you know the book of Judges, the story is tragic because basically what happens is the people get themselves in all kinds of trouble and they cry out to God. God brings a judge, he cleans everything up, gets order back, and then they dismiss the leadership and then it kind of goes back into chaos and they plead with God because chaos is chaos and nobody wants to live in chaos and then they 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 call for God and God brings another judge and they listen for a little while and then they go back so let's talk for a moment about anarchy now, obviously a relevant subject in our culture a relevant subject to our day anarchy by definition absence or denial of any authority or established order Anarchy is when we live just doing what we want to do, however we want to do it, whenever we want to do it. It's it just anarchy is uh, no, nobody can tell me what I can't do. I, I have a, a right to do whatever I want to do, and you can't tell me. It can't, uh, when, when I was a kid, um, we, we used to have this thing in our neighborhood where somebody would, would say to do something, and we would say something like, you, you're not the boss of me. You're not the boss of me. You're not my parents. You're not the boss of me. It seems like we grow up wanting to have no one be the boss of us, nobody to tell us what we can and can't do. And we live in a society and we have systems in place that keep everything in check so that together we can live. Together we can live. But what happens is, is we start going, I don't need this, and don't tell me I can't. Now, I'm going to talk about two extremes right here, okay? From the simplest thing as being told to wear a face mask. And I understand there's all kinds of political implications behind this. I don't even go there. We're asked for the sake of everybody in our society to wear a face mask in public. And yet we're going, I'm not wearing a face mask. And again, it's politicized, I get all that. I'm not wearing a face mask. You can't tell me what to do. All the way to the electoral college, where you have electors basically saying, I don't really care what the people say or what they want, uh, you know. And so the Supreme Court has to get involved going, if the people say that, the Electoral College has to conform. We, uh, don't tell me what I can't do. I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Now, are we really qualified people to be, you know, the, the person making all these decisions? Uh, a couple of passages come from the book of Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs fourteen twelve says, there is a way that appears to be right but in the end, it leads to death. Uh, see, see, I can think I know what's best, and I can think I understand, and I think I have the wisdom and all. And Scripture is really clear on this, that if I follow that path, that will lead me somewhere. I had no idea I was going. Proverbs 16.2 says, All a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Uh, I, see, if I'm the final judge of my motives... Here's what I know about myself, and, and I'm going to say this about myself, but I'm also going to say this is true for you. Two things I can do, I can always do. I can always justify, and I can always rationalize what I want to do. I can always justify what I want to do, and I can always rationalize what I want to do. I can convince myself, and this is why Scripture is saying this, I can convince myself of anything I want to convince myself of. I am fully capable of doing that. And in the, in the end, I, I can lead myself down paths that I was literally, as Jeremiah uh, t t talks about the deceitfulness of my heart, where I was really believing I was doing what was right, but in the end, I was actually being taken. Now, let's just talk about sin for a minute. What is sin? Sin is the rebellion against the authority of God and justifying why I'm doing what I'm doing. Sin is basically the idea that you can't... Um, you, you can't tell me what I can and can't do. My, my, you know, my mind wants to do, and let me repeat, what I want, when I want, where I want, how I want, with whom I want. I, that's the essence of sin. It's the rebellion against the authority of God. Now, 
obviously we live in a culture where a lot of people don't have any respect for God and they don't have any, you know, there's no relationship with God. But the problem is, is that when we start living in a society where we believe that there's absolutely no accountability, folks, we are on a path that is headed straight to destruction. Um, it, uh, uh, no, I, I can do what I want and, and you can't tell me I can't and, and I, I don't answer to anybody. You see, it's, it's interesting because you'll hear things say like, Look, you can't tell me I have to. I, we live in the land of the free. This is America. We can do what we want to do. Folks, Scripture is really, really clear that we are under accountability. We're, we're going to answer for our lives. We're going to answer for things. Now, again, I understand there's lots of people who don't believe they're going to ever account to God, but church... We must never forget we are all going to give an account for God. Those who deny it and those of us who understand it, we need to be totally aware all of the time that in the end, what we do, we're going to be held accountable for it. Um, And again, the very nature of sin is to just want to get away from it. Let me read to you some passages. Again, just bear with me. Let me just remind you of the fact that it's time right now to be very aware of our attitude, of of the thoughts of our mind. And, and what we're justifying and what we're defending. Romans 2, 5 through 11 says, but because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will repay each person according to what they have done to those who by persistence in doing good see glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking, who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile, but glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good for the Jew and then for the Gentile, for God does not show favoritism. Folks, despite the, the craziness of the society that we're living in, we must never forget that we have a creator, we have a God, and this God, it, it, we're accountable to him, we answer to him, and, and we have to always remember that the day is going to come. Hebrews 9.27 says, just as people are destined to die once, and after that to face judgment. Now, what's good judgment? What is, it's not, not, nothing to fear if we live the way we were supposed to live. But folks, there's two things we're going to be judged on. And again, let's be crystal clear. The things we do and the things we say. Let me again take you to Scripture, 2 Corinthians 5.10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. And for every word, the words of Jesus. But I tell you that everyone, this is Matthew 12, 36 and 37. But I tell you that everyone will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted and by your words you will be condemned. Okay, so let's go back to where we started. What am I trying to get away with? What are you trying to get away with? I'm not going to get away with anything, and nor are you. Now, again, the society we live in, you know, if you can pull it off, pull it off. If you can take over a block of Seattle, take over a block of Seattle. Okay, good luck to you, by the way. Um, but, but the reality of it is this, this church, um, this is God's world. It's his universe. It's, he's the creator we're all, account, we're all children of his in the sense that he, he is the one who willed us to be here. And the day will come when we will answer to what we'll do. Now, I want to close with this thought. Um, wouldn't it be awesome if I, I did the right thing in my life, always just did the right thing out of love for God, not out of fear of punishment? Now, let that soak in for just a minute just out of love for God, just did the right thing because it was the right thing. And I loved God and I wanted to be the kind of person who did the right thing. Uh, there, there was a number of years ago, there was a weird thing that happened at a little town in Wisconsin. Um, the police chief gave himself a ticket. Let, let me explain what happened. He was on patrol. The police chief of this town was on patrol and a dump truck had stopped and, and, and there was a car approaching quickly behind the cop car and he realized that there, this could lead to a collision. So he actually pulled out on the side of the dump truck so the car wouldn't hit him and wouldn't hit the dump truck. So give this some space. What happened was when he went around the vehicle, went around the dump truck, he didn't realize that on the other side of the street, there was a, a school bus that was parked with its lights flashing, kids getting off. He literally came out and passed the school bus. He pulled himself over and he wrote himself a ticket. 
Now, he didn't tell anyone he wrote himself a ticket. What happened is his ticket showed up in the court system. And all of a sudden they're going, what in the world? Who gave you a ticket? And it came out he gave himself a ticket. Because what he did was wrong and he knew what he did was wrong. He wanted to be held accountable for it. Now listen, Dallas Willard has a concept. And I'm going to close on this. What would it take? And I've, I'd love this. I'd love this. What would it take for me to become, for you to become the kind of person that God could literally set free in the universe to do anything you wanted to do with no fear that you would ever do anything that wasn't what he ultimately wanted you to do or what was best for you, which are the same things. What would it take for me to not need to fear punishment or getting caught or you know found out because I'm just wanting to do the thing. What's, I just want to do the right thing. And God, I'm good. You don't need to, you don't need, you know, I'm not trying to get away with anything. I just love you so much. And I love your righteousness so much. I just want to do what's right. Folks, in a day like this, let's be thinking about what it would take for us to become the kind of people who don't try to get away with anything. We just try to do what's right. We need people right now in our society who will just do the right thing because it's the right thing. And they understand the perspective. So, Let's be that kind of church. Let's be those kind of people. Let me pray, and we'll wrap this one up. So God, thank you for our time. God, thank you for the love that you have shown to us. God, we understand that you're God and we're not. And we get that all mixed up, and we believe we can make our own rules, and we know what's right and wrong, and we simply don't. And that we're all going to be held accountable. We understand that. But God, help us to become the kind of people who never need fear of accountability, never need fear of being found out because we just don't do things that we shouldn't be doing and we're not involved in things we shouldn't be involved in. Help us to become those kind of people. And God, I pray for this to happen to our church and in each and every one of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you guys. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next week.